Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. Is this which one we're on, kids? I got myself a white claw. We all do. We all do. We're going white claws across the board here. We got some special guests in studio in Wilmington, North Carolina. Uh, Brian Andrews. Hey. Jeffrey Wilson. What's going on? You go by Jeffrey? Jeff. Uh, we'll call he you doesn't Jeffrey go here. Epstein. Perfect. Come on, he doesn't yeah. go Epstein. We go Epstein in here, brother. <laughs> uh, we we do it um, every Jeffrey, uh, be it a giraffe, a uh, pedophile. We go. We call them Jeffrey. We don't call them Jeff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it feels like you're cheating the other way. Yeah. <laughs> you know Epstein didn't kill himself, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we I mean, all I, know that. Everybody. I'm knows. on social media. The so. entire okay. American public knows that. Well, just checking. The people that killed him know Just that. checking. <laughs> well, of course they know. They killed him. These guys... These guys write a lot of words. A lot yeah, of words. Yeah, there's not pictures in there. There's no pictures. And no you also pictures. can't You also can't eat it, so I don't know if you would really be interested in that. Okay. No. Well, uh, but ladies and gentlemen, we, we have the authors of the Tier 1 Thriller series here. You got five books? Yeah. Fuck you, dude. When did you guys start writing these? 2016. So, sounds right. You oh, have five in, in, since 2016? Yeah. yeah. Is that all you're doing? No, we, got a, we have another series that we started, too, so we did two in that, and then... Um, pop, pop that up a little closer there to yeah, yeah, yeah. seven year old gullet. Yeah. So you you've go. done seven books in four in, years, in three years. Well, depending um, on when they started in 16, a little, little yeah. more than that. We got another one that we're shopping and we just signed a deal for a third series. So, uh, we finished the first book and that one comes out next year. Sons of war. <laughs> Jesus yes. Christ. How that are you able a lot to pump things writing. out that? Cause that, there's like two guys like, hmm? Yeah, but still, dude, even going hey, back and two forth. Two guys. Yeah. No, I, I, Let's try it. I know it's two guys. <laughs> Let's try it. Yeah. Yeah. You want to try two guys? Yeah. Let's try two guys. We'll see how much we can get done. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're going to get a lot of shit done. Um, with two dudes you writing. Ta- you guys now. are talking about gay sex, Yeah, we're right? talking about yeah. gay sex, not got writing it. books. Am yeah. I? Oh. But with writing know, books, it's, too late it's now. two guys, you've got to edit back and forth, and that's what seems crazy to me of no matter what you're changing, even though you have two people, you still have to to edit and then go back and change the other guy's edits and say, I don't like what you've written. Yeah, now. you're a piece of shit. Get out. Do you, are you guys like uh, the brothers from uh, uh, Oasis? You mean like Ocean's Eleven? No. no uh, Oasis. Oh, Oasis, oh, the oh band. God, oh, I don't know. The Gallagher that. brothers, they fucking hate each other. Do you guys fight? No, no. No punches have been thrown in this whole relationship. Well, it helps that we live in different cities. Are, oh, you, yeah, yeah. are you guys fans of Oasis? I'm not familiar with Oasis. No. The, the band? Oh, the band. I thought you were talking about a movie. No, no. The band Oasis. Liam and, and Noel, Noel Gallagher. he's talking about. They yeah. fight a lot. They, they hate, hate, each, other. They hate yeah. each other. They're like, they hate each other more than anybody's ever hated anyone before. So like, their, their yeah. hatred fuels their creativity. But there's too much money involved now, right? So. Well, they're, no, they haven't they been together up. for 10 years, I guess. They broke yeah. up, yeah. They made so much money that they were like, fuck you. <laughs> I am going to break up because I can. I don't have to work with you ever again. Oh, that's the dream. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what, what no, I'm I, hearing is you guys hate each I other. Now I understand. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you just want this all to be over, life included. So let's get, let's get to it. Yeah. Uh, shall we? Let's, let's get the guns out, brother. One bullet apiece. <laughs> Jamie, load them up. <laughs> what was the first book you guys wrote together? <laughs> Tier one. It's the first book <clears throat> in this series. Yeah. Oh, so it is called, t- like, because it's called Red Spectre. Yeah, yeah, there's five books in the series. The series is called Tier One. The first book in the series was also called Tier One. Okay, so Tier One. Uh, so it's kind of like a musician naming their, their first album after their name. Or it's it's just exactly like, like that. Yeah, I'm self-titled. Kesha, this right. is Kesha. Did anybody do that? Everyone does Pearl that. No, they do. Not the first album necessarily, but one of their albums yeah, everybody is almost always, always a self-titled does it. album. Yeah. It's called Kesha. Yeah, and then what you guys do? You shop it? Yeah, we have a literary agent. She shopped it. and uh, we Where at? Who, who is it? Our yeah, agent, uh, mm-hmm. Gina Panateri at Talcott Notch. Okay. Um, Best so agent in the world, by the way. It's, it's great. It. Yeah. It's rare to say, by the way. Yeah. yeah, yeah I know most of our friends hate their agent. Book, she's agents, awesome. are, she's partic- book agents are particularly bad I, I hate for some reason. Mine. I don't know why. She's like, our, she's like family. I mean, yeah. And she's a bulldog, too. So she's, she's out there selling the shit if out you, of whatever, If you find an agent that can like, get your shit done and also get the fucking company to market for you after the book is out, that's... Well, that, that's the magic. That's like yeah. that's Gina. Like she's like she never. That's, we, that's why we call her the bulldog. She never stops. Like we're five books in, and she's still like, "How can we make the next deal better? How can we make the next yeah. deal better? What are we gonna do?" She'll take Good. a call from Maybe me at six in the her. morning. Like, yeah, where is she there. out of? She's up in New York. She's actually her office, I guess, is in Connecticut. But yeah, oh, okay, great. Great. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. To uh, Ross's agent, mine. you're uh, you're I fucking fired, brother. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I hate all of mine. Um, so, how did you guys meet? Yeah, what, we met tell, me, tell me your backgrounds, too. You guys, are you guys both military? Yeah, we're both Navy veterans. I'm a submarine officer. Mm-hmm. I served on Fast Attack, uh, submarine in the Pacific. And Jeff was... Uh, what one? Jeff, tell his story. 
uh, Louisville. Okay. Talk to the microphone, my, please. My entire microphone. father and extended family are Parchy. Oh, really? Yes. Well, hey. They did some really cool. They did some really, really cool shit on the Parchy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, my dad pretty much rode the Parchy. So he was on the original Seawolf, left the Seawolf, and all, a lot of them went over to the Parchy. And then we all moved from uh, – uh, we were in, in Novato, California, because mm-hmm. uh, Mare Island used to have the fast attacks there and then closed it down, and we all moved to Banger. Yeah, yeah. And Parchi, uh, she's retired now, and yep. Jimmy Carter's doing doing her business. But um, No one knows whoa. about that side of whoa. things. Jimmy whoa, Carter's whoa, the name whoa, of the whoa, ship, whoa. and her is the gender pronoun there used to refer go. to ships. Because when you say Jimmy Carter's doing her business, separately, yeah. <laughs> it's a real come to Caitlin story. <laughs> it really is. Uh, it's like, hey, man, that's, you know, he's got a broken hip. Is he still trying to get it in? Um, he's always falling down now, Jimmy yeah. Carter. It's because his the, dick's so big. I well, think. That's maybe. He keeps tripping over it, yeah. you know? No, it's not it. That, he, he just he's, keeps a, a, a bag full of peanuts in his pocket. I hate Jimmy Carter. Yeah, a lot of people do. He's a nice guy, but a terrible president. And you... We're in the Navy as well? Yeah, I was Navy also. I did a couple different things in the Navy. Eventually, I was a surgeon. So I was a combat surgeon with the Marines and then with Special Warfare for four or five years. Oh, dope. Uh, how yeah. did, do you, did, did you do actual surgery on the ship? No, I never did anything on a ship. So I was uh, I deployed to Iraq with the Marines the first time, and then I was with an East Coast base. So you're like, team. So you're like in, a, in an aid station somewhere? Uh, no, I was with a Frist team, so we oh, were okay, up at cool, the fort yeah. edge of the battlefield, yeah. yeah, blowing up tents. That shit. fucking sucks, dude. Yeah, it did kind of suck. <laughs> but it is but it's, it is, it's right? better than being in an aid station. It's Absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. true. At least there's no you fucking chuds walking in and out of your... Yeah. Out of your building all the time trying to tell you what to do. Like, yeah, you'd rather go do something. I'm the doctor, dude. Get the fuck out of here. Right. Like, hey, are you doctoring right? Cut, cut the grass outside when you're done. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Recircumcise my boy. I don't think, I don't think they got I need a all the skin. I need a research, dude. Nowhere on earth does someone who has no idea what you're doing have the audacity to walk in and tell you how to do what you're doing than the military. I don't know what that comes from. I have no idea. But, but it's, it's everywhere in the military. God damn, Certainly dude. not unique to anyone. It's the fucking right? worst. Yeah. Uh, anything. Anything in this life. You go into fucking Olive Garden on college, I'm sure somebody's getting yelled at right now. You know? Make those breadsticks better. Yeah. Like, <laughs> hey, you put way too much garlic on them. They're those. frozen. They come like trees? that. I take them out of plastic and put them in an oven, dude. What else do you want me to do? Yeah. Give, give, don't give so much marinara out. Um, <laughs> yeah. So when you guys write this first book and you sit down together, did you have the same idea or did you bounce it off one another? Well, when we originally decided to do it, we decide we didn't originally decide to do it so he thought i had this idea. we had all both writing both writing our own novels met at thriller fest he had an idea hey you were in the seal community and i subs we'll do like novels together mm-hmm. and i was like ah screw that I thriller can't. thriller fest you yeah said. it's a huge conference in new york every year international thriller writer society oh, cool. the, yeah um so he had the idea to write it together i didn't i had done enough books i didn't i'd only done a couple but that was enough to know i didn't think i wanted to do it with somebody else so um but Eventually, we brainstormed this idea under the guise that I was going to help him do it, and then I fell in love with the story, and we tried it together. And it was, the idea was he finally pitched this idea. All right, look, dude, I know you don't want to do it. Let's write five chapters, mm-hmm. and if it's working, great, and if not, then you can keep the book. And I was yeah, like, yeah. cool. I just stole a book from Brian Andrews, and he's kind there of a big go. deal. So, yeah. uh, And we wrote the book in three and a half months. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, just done. 450 pages, three and a half months. And Fully edited. No, rough no. draft, and then okay. and but then Still. we edit in like six weeks because we've got this team approach and great editors that work with us. So yeah. that's great. How yeah. many editors work with you guys? Uh, we have a developmental editor named Caitlin Alexander who's phenomenal, and then we have two copy editors and a line editor. But that's all provided by the publisher, you know. But their people are great. That's fantastic because usually you don't get along with them. I've yeah, I've, I've had bad I've experiences. Here. Yeah. Well, you write your books are so fucked up; they're always trying to pull shit out of them. Correct. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that. Happening yeah, th- this is like they; those people have probably have no idea what they're reading when they're because you guys are talking like some super tactical shit. Yeah, you. they have to just assume it's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, there's a little bit of that. The probably. other part I, about that I wanted to ask you about is: is this uh, like a single universe? Is it like a character like Jack Ryan or Mitch Rapp or something like that, or is it like a team or what is it? It's both. So it's a, the main character. You know, we have our Mitch Rapp. Mm-hmm. Our Mitch Rapp is John Dempsey. He's a guy. His entire tier one SEAL team gets wiped out in an ambush. He's presumed dead, and so they give him an opportunity to take a new identity, join a super secret task force, and hunt down the assholes that did it, right? So okay. that's the premise so of the book. So it's kind of like Ghost Recon style? <laughs> kind of that almost, stuff. And then so he's like, he ha- builds his own team, and then we have characters sort of come and go. But we've got a core of good characters that stick through all five books. Yeah, one thing we do that's a little different is our series is back-to-back trilogies. So the first three books are our Persian trilogy. So they're going mm. up against Vivac and 
Iranian intelligence. Yeah, and, yeah. Mm. You know, Iran does all kinds of false flags and yeah. and bullshit, right? So um, our task force is matched at different levels. So you've got guys up at the highest level, you know, politicians, president level. Then you got middle level, you know, guys p- implementing all the strategy. And then you got the guys in the field. So you're seeing the story being told from, you know, White House level, you know, nctc level Mm -hmm. and then at the field and you got bad guys too like because in real life bad guys just don't fucking die because you want them to die at the end of your book no they hide for fucking 18 years in the goddamn middle of nowhere and then you randomly find them exactly right that's ridiculous like putin he's not going away just because people don't like him no so no he's not getting any taller either though so that's no he's not (laughs) was he fine that's that's something we took to the series we said you know what real life is you're going up against these guys and they just don't die at the end of each book so certainly we from a storytelling standpoint from drama you know people do have to die but we have this longitudinal aspect where you really get to know the bad guys Mm -hmm. just like you're getting to know the good guys so it's more satisfying when the good guys win and Mm -hmm. also you do see a little bit of the world through these bad guys eyes yeah yeah well i mean i think that's interesting because uh if you ask people what their favorite star wars movie is at least with the first trilogy a lot of people say empire because there's a there's a tragedy to it right like it actually invokes feelings it's not just some fucking happy-go-lucky bullshit yeah and i think that's interesting i like writing like that like his books end horribly yes but also <laughs> good at the same time yeah. you just gotta read them i mean i think the new book opens up with like a sex scene with someone a graphic sex scene with harriet tubman yeah that's I'm right i'm uh, big in history <laughs> so i want to make sure that i get it right i think you could call this historical fiction if you yeah. Put your tongue as far in your cheek as possible. I think you could call this a story. Yeah. Or if you just cut off the whole goddamn thing. Yeah, maybe. Cut off the whole goddamn tongue. Um, I'm curious. So who who was your first publisher for, for this? And how successful was it on, on the first one? So this series was with Thomas and Mercer. And, okay. uh, yeah, the first book did great. We're, we're really lucky. These, all these books have done really well I mean, there's series. a yeah. there's a big eclectic market for these. I mean, because... You know, Tom, the, Tom Clancy started this pretty much. Yeah. Well, what's cool is that now. God, that was forever. A lot ago. of the guys writing the really good stuff. Not all of them, but a lot of them are military guys, right? Like mm-hmm. us. Like you know, Jack, uh, Jack is doing yeah. stuff now. Uh, Jack, T- well, Tony Tata. I think year. you guys might have talked to him before. Uh, General Tata. He's yeah. writing in the thriller space. Tom Young is a former, you know, C one thirty driver, and he's writing these. Pl- so there's a lot of guys. You know, twenty years of war. Yeah. Yeah produces enough yeah. guys that have done some shit that you can actually yeah. write I mean, about. We're seeing in Hollywood, too, our buddy Tyler Great has produced yeah. uh, or directed an episode of SEAL Team recently, which is like he did what he did in the military, and all of a sudden now he's on the show, and then he's a character on the show, like a major character. Yeah, I think he was a tech advisor. and then Yeah, he, he was a tech a advisor. And then a yeah, regular. And now, now, now he's, he's directed an episode of like so major how, how network cool television. That? It's fucking great. cool as shit, man. I love it. It's great. But it's good for the genre, too, right? Like instead of just some guy that was working in a library and have you seen did the some show? research. Have you, know? you watched the show SEAL Team? Yeah, I've watched it. So it's like, I mean, look, obviously it's goofy Hollywood shit sometimes, but the tech stuff in there is super. I love that. That Well, that's what we're always saying. Like that's show I, as long as they're outside the wire it's yeah. a great show yeah, yeah. and then they come back yeah. and you're like just kill me like just, just uh, shut yeah. up <laughs> shut up and go shoot somebody yeah. but but when yeah they man the, whoever's doing the advising it sounds like it's your buddy like he's they, one of them and there's they two get that a, shit right yeah, there's, outside there's the wall all the tactical two seals i think badass. that are on that yeah. team as well yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's like a, i think it's a four-man team over there and they do great i mean it's like from the kits all the way down to the movements and the the way they communicate with each other, it's super. I, I love that. Yeah, shit. it's really good. It's like really, it's distracting it, to people like us to try to watch and enjoy a movie like that, and everything's fucked yeah. up. Like, come on, man. That's you could have all you had to do was hire one of our buddies and ask him, and he would have told you that that's fucked up. It's that easy to do yeah. it. Hollywood, yeah. quit fucking around. Quit wow. fucking up. <laughs> good luck with that. Like the original Jack Ryan, the first season of Jack Ryan with John Krasinski. Mm-hmm. One of the one of the early arcs in the story is. Uh, these uh these terrorists roll up to a fucking uh, CIA compound and there's like a captain and a and a sergeant first class pulling guard duty and they're wearing like shitty uniforms and they have like M16s with no optics on them oh like God. what the fuck am I looking at here do this <laughs> like what what is this shit first of all they wouldn't have been in uniform in the first place they probably would have been using local national weapons if they were trying to hide right yes, like, what the exactly. fuck is this well with, with you guys you don't have that problem yeah no, you just write it in yeah, yeah. Exactly. as you know exactly yeah. what happened and yeah. what went on over there. Uh, so, so, like, for the first book, uh, do you have to send out queries to agencies and stuff like that? 
How did that work for you guys? Well, we already had an agent, so because we were writing individual books at the time, mm. and uh, his that's agent, hard. He had a good agent, and I had a great agent who was just a bulldog, like we said. And so we decided together, well, we'll let Gina shop it, and she she sold it. So she was quickly. originally your agent, and then she became mm. the both yeah, your agents. My agent, she her name was Phyllis Westberg. She's she actually was uh, J.D. Salinger's agent. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, shit. So she's like 28. So I mean, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. She's like really young. <laughs> that's good street cred. But <laughs> yep. yeah. yeah. No, she's like kind of a big deal. But, you know, when we finished tier one, I said, uh, Phyllis, you know, got this great project. I'm excited for you to read. She's like, I'll definitely read it. And when? Yeah, sometime in the next couple months. And I was like, <laughs> yep. Jeff, like, Gina's ready to shop it now, right? Yeah, He's like, yeah. yeah. Gina's read it and is already calling people. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah. So if, I, if, look, if your name is Phyllis and you rep J.D. Salinger, I mean, you can yeah, you, go ahead and put that other foot in the grave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I, I've had, yeah, I've had <laughs> old agents before, too. Yeah. One of them actually died, so. Yeah. Well, yeah, she, I mean, for real. Was she it dictated all of her emails. But when I first started with her, I was like, wow, she's like with it. She knows tech. I mean, she's emailing me back. And then I realized, oh, no, that's just her assistant. Her oh, assistant. that's <laughs> funny. Dictates she writes it out on a note yeah, card. She and does. Text him this. Yeah. No, <laughs> and the reason why I ask uh, with all of this is I think that's one of the most common questions we get here is, hey, I've got this interesting story. My, my time overseas was crazy. How do I get an agent? How do I get started? How do that's, I? That's the shit, right? I mean, yes. writing a book is not, I mean, you either can or you can't. And if you can, you do it. And it's not that hard. But the business side of writing it's a whole that's the that's the bitch i mean that's br cracking that egg is almost impossible for yeah a lot of and since you said that let's let's start with that was that a conscious decision of all right we're gonna write this book together because i think financially this could make a lot of money or was it a passion project at first because one time it's it's i mean usually it's it's one or the other I think it was both for me. I won't speak for Brian, but like we're, we were both already writing. So we already had a passion for writing. We wanted to write. We wanted to be full-time writers. Mm -hmm. Neither of us was quite there yet until this series. Um, so we loved the writing. There's, def there's definitely a passion for this genre. We both wanted to write in this genre. But you want to make a living, too. Like I got kids. I got school to pay for. And yeah. um, this was a good business model for us. We didn't know when we started, but it turned out because we have this model that I guess would work for nobody else that co-authors from the sound of it, um, we write really fast and we can crank out a book in four months. Mm -hmm. um, and so we can just produce a high volume of books. That's, we just signed a new deal with another publisher. So we're going to have a spinoff series in the same shared world. So we have both books coming out and now we're looking at yet another deal. So I wouldn't be able to do that by myself. It'd take me nine months to get the product clean and ready to go. But together we do it in four you can crank out three books. So yeah, it's both passion and business for sure. But I think the one thing to keep in mind for anybody who's aspiring uh, novelist, storyteller is, you know, uh, the barrier to entry now is very low. With mm. KDP, anybody can write a book, anybody can mm. be an author. So the market is crowded, first of all. And, you know, second of all, um, you know, we all get enchanted by these ideas of these, you know, write your first book, it gets recognized, the seven-figure deal comes, and it's a huge success. Those things happen, yeah, to like a half of 1% of right. people. You know, most of the authors out there have been slogging it out for a long time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you, you kind of have to pay your dues, just like any business. So you just got to write that first book, and if it doesn't sell... Then you write your second book and you write your third book. Sure. And then eventually, you know, you get you become a better writer. And if you're lucky, you have a good agent and you get traction and your work gets out there and gets noticed. Mm -hmm. And even um, with several books, it's work. I mean, it's yeah. you know, we're the blue collar writers. I mean, we didn't get that seven figure deal mm -hmm. out of the gate. No. We had to work and work and work. It took several years before we could write full time and not have to do anything else. Yeah. So. And you got that second seven figure deal is what you're saying. No, no, I'm kidding. No, <laughs> no I have a, we is, have a backlist now. That's how, what we have. How if you want to be a writer, then be, be uh, wealthy before you start. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's sure, that's right. the best It's model. like being a rally car driver, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah. how has the rise of the popularity of Audible helped you guys, or has it helped you, or has it affected you, I guess? That's a great question. You, you guys yeah. use Ray Porter, right? We yeah. do. Jack yeah. Carr uses, and fuck, help me, everybody. Kevin Mitnick, the hacker it, from Everybody that's the lucky, everybody that gets him. I yeah. mean, that when we started out, I, didn't, I wasn't really in the Audible space. He was doing a lot of traveling, and so he listened to Audible. I never listened to my first time I listened to a book on tape was our book. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't familiar with it. But he knew Ray Porter was the guy to get and told our agent. And What's well, him or George kind of Goodell, right? It's, right. It's either him or George Goodell. Those otherwise. are. Well, there's a there's a few people out there well, now. Scott but Brick. There's the British dude too. Who's the British? George dude Goodell's very good. Scott Brick's very good. Brick. Is but good. Ray yeah, is. Yeah. Phenomenal. I remember I was I was listening to Ray Porter's stuff and I remember thinking someday <laughs> like, that dude could read one of my books someday. Yeah. 
be fucking awesome. Like, yeah. That was the dream. And it was. The first time I yeah. listened to our book, it was like it was a book I hadn't even written. Like mm. I, it was like came to life. He's amazing. He but is that's really good. audible. That is huge, huge, huge now for Massive. us. I mean, I won't speak for everybody, but thirty Massive for everyone. More than thirty percent of our sales are audible. Really? It's going yeah. to and it's going to continue to climb. And I think and the reason so too. because is podcasts. So yeah. uh, podcasts, once that became such an ex- like explosion mm. of, of a, an audio medium. It's the way people want to consume their content. Correct. Yeah. And so everybody hits us up and says, hey, man, I wish your shows were longer, you know? Um, and it's like, well, we, there's not enough time in the day to do yeah. those, those type of shows. But books, you know, these are six and a half to seven hours a piece on audio books. And it's like, can't write them fast enough um, because it's finally some long form content that everybody's demanding. Or yeah. it's just like, hey, man get the next one out as fast as you can and it's like well it's not that easy um but uh yeah it's a huge chunk of, of sales and it's almost mandatory that you get somebody good now yeah because if, if it's a piece of shit your publisher will let you know about it you know yeah oh, i mean yeah. when we were when we were trying to get ray originally we had i think six or seven uh samples mm. and you know each guy is bringing his take to that opening s- sequence right and uh just how they put the emphasis on certain words or mm. how they pronounce certain words you could write a technically brilliant and authentic novel, mm-hmm. and if somebody who doesn't understand military speak yep. and terminology narrates it, you're going to sound they'll be mispronouncing everything, yeah. mm-hmm. and you'll sound like a bunch of morons. Yeah, yeah. 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 And well, the I mean, cadence, he, and you know how operators talk too, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. the way you talk to each other. He's he's just got a gift for for figuring that out, and uh, he does. It's amazing. I've, we write the books differently now, mm-hmm. having listened to yeah. Ray Porter. Right? Really? It's That's like, really I, interesting. I can, I we can tell you. We write for Audible. We write for Audible, but also there are elements of the character that I think that we write now I'm like yeah I didn't really think about him that way but I think that's right I think next time I'm going to I'm going to bring that out What do you mean like maybe he's more aggressive reading a certain sentence and you're like man this should be and the, this should, do you, we, I should use expositional dialogue a little bit here to Yes to, to frame that, that but also to the character development like I learned things about the character when he has them speaking you know like you'll know, give him a certain accent or a certain they're they're a little more pushy or a little bolder mm-hmm. in the way they speak and I was like I didn't think of him that way but yeah maybe that's better and then you write it that way the next time so he's impacted our writing he's he's incredible Yeah cuz if you can write for someone's voice um, that's what makes it easier because then you're like, all right, well, this would say this, and you know how it's going to sound. Right. So then you, once you start writing, you're like, all right, cool. And now, I don't know. It might screw me up sometimes. Like sometimes now I might be like writing Ray Porter speaking, and like that, I, I got to get it out of my head so I can just get back to this story. <laughs> Is, isn't it Tarantino that usually has an idea of who he wants to play all the characters in his movies before he yeah. writes the goddamn yeah. thing? Yeah, close. I, and, we, and, he, and that's why that he well, goes yeah. so crazy on dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. Because He's already he's he's like hearing with the them. person say it yeah. in his head. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you ever read a, t- a Tarantino script, they are written out like novels. Um, I mean, amazing. He's there's a reason why he's one of the very best. It is not just his directing; his writing skills are off the chart. But he will describe everything that's going on. Um, the first fifteen twenty pages of Inglorious Bastards is the best screenplay I've ever read in my entire life. Because it's when you when you see the movie and and you read the script, it is second for second what was in that script and you feel like you were there just from reading it and then you watch the movie and it's the same you're like god damn it man you're 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 the best that's doing why doesn't he release those as books people would read the fuck out of that so that is the next chapter in his career so he wants to do 10 movies walk away live off of those 10 movies forever and then go into books and plays so that is what, mm. that's what he's working there, on now. There is a, I would love to see a Tarantino play. Can you imagine oh that yeah. shit? <laughs> There's Fuck a lot me. more freedom and control in this medium, right? There so is. when we are the master of our universe here, we don't really have people telling us, well, you can't do this, or yeah. it wouldn't happen this way because we can't film it. So we don't have any constraints. Mm. So we just tell the story in the purest way that we want to. Yeah. You don't have to. to worry about an actor getting the tone or whatever, a- right? Exactly. Yeah. Or special effects yeah. or how, yeah. you know, what the yeah. co- what's the cost? Budget. Budget. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What's that, the budget for It's just for doing our imagination. It. Is what, right. Everybody well, asks why I enjoy writing books versus screenplays because I've sold a ton of screenplays. It's the same answer of the budget. I don't have to write for a budget. Yeah. yeah, I don't have to write for a twenty million dollar actor. I don't have to do any of that shit. I can literally do whatever I want. And then if you want to make a movie out of it afterwards, congratulations, you guys figure exactly. that out. Not my job on this one. Um, have these been optioned into into a movie? We have some stuff in the works, and we've been talking to some interesting people. But we want the right deal. You know, we want the right. I think Jeff and I think it's okay for us to say like streaming would be our preference. We'd like these characters to go. 
Netflix. Yeah, multi, Long, yeah. multi yeah. episodes. So you'd like to do yeah. what what they did with Jack Ryan, make like a yeah. Ten there's too much. When you like guys, that. if you ever get a chance to read it, there's there's just too much going. Yeah, on you'd in have here. to make. I, I read the first one. You'd have to make like thirty. Fucking yeah, even movies. An, even yeah. the first. I was gonna say even a single book yeah. is like you couldn't do a no, two hours. No, it's too deep. There's too yeah. many th- different things going on, and you're setting up for future books at the same time. It doesn't yeah. really work in movies like that. I mean, it can, but that's a pain in the ass. But if you screw up the first one. Right. So if you and that's what Brian, I guess, was saying was like, you got to pick the right guy. Like, you got to be willing to say no. And a lot of writers aren't. A lot of writers are like, you I don't never heard of you, but you just optioned my book. Yes, I'll take the money. Yeah. And then God forbid if they actually make it and they don't know how the how to do it and they make it badly. You're done. Well, how many times has that happened with like amazing book series and shitty ass movies? A million. Like the the Ender's Game. Yeah. The Ender's Game movie fucking sucked. Ready Uh, Player One. Ready Player One fucking sucked, dude. That is one of the that is one of the screenplay was fucking garbage. Yeah, uh, that was one of the best uh, books I've read. It was really good. Like it's in my top ten and like what the fuck happened? And Spielberg was involved. Yeah. uh, Yeah. So how does that happen? How does that happen? Because right. I would say it's 80, 80, 20. Like, it sounds cliche and old, but it's true. Books really are better than film. And when you're reading a book, there's something more powerful th- about it. It's a theater of the mind. Yes. And I mean, like, if you say chair, if I, if I have a chair on screen, it's that chair. If I say chair in the book, everybody has their own idea of what the chair is, right? Yeah. So there's continuity from beginning to end with everything because you're building it in your own mind. That's, that's you got, why you've you got internal see... monologue and all that shit that yeah. you can't do. Well, and, and we never have uh, Dempsey's face on the cover. So every cover is him from the back or the side or far away or like this where he's got the mask. Yeah, that's the most of his We don't want for that reason. to bias anybody's mm. imagination and steal yeah, yeah. that from them yeah. like... This is what he looks like. Because you in felt that, mind. right? Like where oh, you yeah. had this vision of something, and then they made a movie. It's like, oh, look at uh, Lee Child. Like they made yeah. these movies, and they made Jack, Jack Reacher, Reacher five he's foot like five eight. Foot seven. Like, yeah, like, what? like come on, man. He's six it, three it, in the fucking books. And, and yeah. Tom Cruise is a great actor, and he did yeah. a great job. Those with movies role. are actually are those. Yeah, they're good. They're good they're movies. Good. But if you are a huge fan of the books, yeah. it it just is disappointing because yeah. it's yeah. not what you imagined. It's right. not what you pictured. And as somebody who hadn't read that series, I enjoyed the film. Yeah. And then I went back later because my my buddy was in that that. Jack Reacher, the first one. I went back and read it, and he goes, "You read it?" And I was like, "No." And he goes, "Dude, it's like a foot smaller than my time." And I, was like, really? I was like, "Well, I enjoyed the movie, it's but I read the fucking book." And I, I read the book. I read, and I was the, like, Whoa, that's I read totally the books different. first, and it didn't. I mean, I was like, "Oh, that's kind of weird," but it's Tom Cruise, so you want to you want to make the movie big enough where people are going to come watch it. I get putting Tom Cruise in it. Yeah. Uh, maybe get him some stilts. I don't know. And they're great, great movies. By the, the movies way, are I, I think they really did. A good. Gr- I don't think that's an example of a bad movie no, from a no, good not book. I mean, those not are great all. movies. Just a different take. But it is a yeah. good example of how you steal away from people the imagination that they created when they read the mm. books. And yeah. it's another example of why it's a harder medium. I think book writing is well, sky's the limit. Do what you want. So, right. like to Dan, what you were saying about. Um, Ender's Game, when, the, when mm. they asked Orson Scott Card, you know, or are you so excited, like, it's finally going to be made into a movie? He's like, it was already perfect. It's a book. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. Because uh, there, there's a lot of writers, too, who are just like, look, I, I felt like I crushed the book. You just pay me the money. You guys can go and fuck this up because yeah. you're going to so many. Up. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. there's so many variables that go into a movie. One actor could fuck it up. The screenwriter could fuck it up. The mm. director, cinematographer could look like <laughs> shit. Uh, now, now comes the obvious question. Who do you want to play him? Oh, I don't think we've ever agreed on somebody. I, I, well, I'll tell you what I've always said is that whoever plays him, mm-hmm. it shouldn't be a, an A list yeah. guy. I like someone who's a solid, Unknown. you know. Yeah. Yeah. You say, I think I That'd saw cool. him in something before, but I'd like him to become Dempsey instead of having somebody like a Tom Cruise or something like that. So yeah, I, no, that's cool. I feel really strongly about having someone that is like launches with this, um, which of course is a big financial risk if these guys want to make a lot of money. Huge. Right? Yeah. But, like, if I had, if they came and said, well, we want to do whatever you want, Jeff, because that's kind of what's mm. going to happen, right? <clears throat> nope. Um, not one. <laughs> yeah. That's I don't what even I know would if they'll say. call you. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, hey, yeah, right. we'll give you one set pass. Yeah. You have to come down to set yeah. one, one day. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what they do in those movies is they just try to fill out the character actors with famous people. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what they do with everything that. now. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, because, like, you take That's the this. only way you can get away with an unknown, right? Like, you can't just. You can't pitch an entirely oh. unknown cast. There's no fucking way. The only way you can do it today in today's studio market world would be that the book would have to be so famous and, and you'd have to get like maybe a Scorsese on board where it's just like, hey, uh, like West Side Story is the last one I could name where they ca- the girl was a complete unknown and she's playing the lead in it. It's like it's got to be a big yeah. series, big enough where they're like, yeah. Uh, where they trust the director to cast the right person. Yeah. yeah. Whereas I, I think if you wanted this to be episodic on TV, you'd have a better shot yeah. to get somebody closer to who you wanted. 
um, because they, you know, Clooney and those guys aren't going to do it or, you know, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No one's going to take a 10, 10 episode deal thing. Yeah. That, yeah. So I, you'd have a better shot there. And I think in, in a realistic shot to get like a character actor who you love where you're like, oh shit, that's a cool move right there. Yeah. Um, the impeachment show is, is, is being shot right now for, for FX, the, uh, Bill Clinton one, same guys who did uh, horror story. So we were all, um, <laughs> waiting to see who was going to play Bill Clinton. Uh, and they chose somebody super interesting. It was Clive Owen. Really? Yeah, and I was like, ah, shit. Wow. Yeah, I was like, I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah, at first I'm like, no, well, no. Yeah, yeah and then when you started thinking about it, you're like, man, that's a what a cool, bold choice. But it's a big concept. You have Ryan Murphy producing it. So, yeah, you can get away with going a little bit off kilter and then uh, – Going into that role because Clive Owen's a great actor. I'm yeah. sure he'll knock it out of the fucking. Park. And it'll be cool to use his British accent too. Yeah, yeah. right. So when he's putting Clint a cigar inside. Cooler. Oh, do you yeah. think they're going full bore with this? Uh, I, I, they are going full bore with this. This really? is what he does. So he did People versus O.J. Simpson. Oh yeah. Yeah. So was that like, Cuba Gooding? You know, Cuba Gooding and all those guys. Uh, they're that's what he does. So he pushes it, and they're they're pissed. The liberal Hollywood's pissed that he's doing it. Really. Oh yeah, because it's it's coming out during Clinton's pissed the election. Oh yes, because she's it's coming out during the election. Everything. Oh, he's going to be Clinton's side. Why didn't you wait a year? And that was the big uh, yeah no shit of it. Um, Fuck man, we just started rapping. You guys are rad. We have some sponsors to pay for this show. Yeah, yeah, you should do that for sure. Right quick, yeah. (laughs) Uh, first off, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. My mom needs a ghost bed. Goddamn right she does. She was not comfortable on my floor the other night. No, nope. boom. She it. sleeps at the base. You know, down there, but it's yeah, like... Yeah, she was at the base, if you and then put, she wa- it, worked her way up to the tip. Usually, just put a water dish down there. She'll be fine. That's what I do. I'll be right around my ball area. Yeah. Uh, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today and get the <laughs> finest mattress you'll ever sleep on. Um, look, if you're military, since you guys are, if you're military first responder, boom. You go on the website, you get 15% off forever. Uh, mattresses, pillows, sheets, covers. So if you get to cap somebody and hide the blood later, nice cover. You know, that's a good idea. That mattress cover, you could probably hide a body in there. Fuck yeah, you can. Get it out. Get out of the building before anybody finds Is out. Is that one of your books? You ever wrap them up in a bed we're, cover? We're going to now. You yeah. can now. Yeah. You can do it at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. If you're a regular civilian like myself, um, their, their Black Friday deals are real nice. Real fucking nice. <laughs> Uh, so nice, uh, it make you wish you saved your turkey that day, just so you could punch it right in the fucking, boom, right in the side of that thing the next day, because those deals will shock your mind. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today and get yo shit. More of a ham guy. Yeah. Ham and a... I'm a ham slapper, actually. A lot yeah. of people don't know hey, that about me. Hey, be sure to tell them about our Black Friday commercial. Ooh, this, since Jared is here, why don't you <laughs> tell them about it? BlackRifleCoffee.com. Oh. Yeah, and we have a, a banger of a Black Friday commercial coming out, so... Be ready to tune in that day, that morning, probably eight a.m. It'll be live. Yeah, yeah. This this like one could run. You had have ever seen this one could run on the Super Bowl for sure. Yes. I also, make sure you check out Power Llama if you're in the coffee club and join the coffee club. Drink this, it, Bros. Yeah. Twenty. We'll get Drink it, Bros. That Twenty over at BlackRifleCoffee.com. Sign up for the coffee club of the month. It gets delivered to your house the same date of every single month. They do not miss, and it is some of the finest coffee on the planet. And the apparel is dope as shit. Evan's hat is my favorite, by the way. Yeah, the new one? Yeah, big yeah. fan of that. Uh, and who's who's uh, last? Uh, Felix Gray. Whoa, Felix Gray. The glasses. The glasses. I'm not wearing them today. We cleared our uh, desk today because we yeah. had some guests here. Oh, there's some over there, but I'm sick. There it is. Don't put them on your face, Jared. You're going to get AIDS. Yeah, I'm them. trying to like not pull Jared's got AIDS with today. My fucking AIDS. <laughs> um, oh, God. He just <laughs> thumbprinted them. Yeah, that's how I hold Don't glasses. put those on. FelixGrayGlasses.com forward slash drinking bros. Look, he spent 11 hours of your day in front of screens, computers, TVs, iPads iPhones, uh, or the screen behind your grandmother's bedroom. She's what? got a screen what? back there. Dan's grandmother's got a screen. Dan doesn't have a grandmother. No, they, they all killed yeah. themselves. Well, I had four of them, all grandmothers. I didn't have a grandfather, and all four of my grandmothers killed themselves. They raised themselves? They raised and killed themselves, yeah. Okay, great. Great. <laughs> um, Felix Gray Grasses. Now, if you're going to... We're making that into a movie next. <laughs> <laughs> We're making a Dance movie called Dan's Grammys. Dan's, Dance Dance four Grammys. Grammys. <laughs> the tale of four Graham Grams. Uh, they were all killed by Werther's um, in, a, in a glass jar. No, uh, these glasses are the best, man. Block your, your eyes from uh, blue light coming in. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll go blind look, probably around 78 instead of 68. So it'll save you 10 years. Go to felixgrayglasses.com forward slash drinking bros today. 
free overnight shipping. Uh, if your eyes are all fucked up anyways and you need a prescription, uh, it's an extra 20 bucks, man. Boom. You're good to go. They told us once not to make medical claims about the glasses, and I told, them to, I told them to mind their fucking business. Ah. And they're like, well, it's our company. I'm like, I, I don't know what that means. Yeah. Um, <laughs> fun fact, too. Uh, if you hold up a cold hot pocket, uh, Felix Gray towards the sun, heat the whole fucking thing up, including the center. Yep. It um, doesn't leave it ice cold in the middle and scalding on the outside. Hot pocket. <laughs> Felix uh, Gray. Yeah, yeah, Felix Gray. Felix Ooh, Gray. Felix Gray. That's what I would call. I, I feel like if I was a like a gentleman caller, you know, like <laughs> that, I feel like oh, I'm, I'm Felix Gray. I'm here to see Felix Gray. If you were a male prostitute, you would your your pseudonym would be well, my daddy. Felix, would be Gray. Felix Gray. Yeah, no, my daddy. Like no, my daddy. I would. Oh, I would, if I, I was see. a male prostitute, I'd want to be called Smosh Puppet. Oh God! <laughs> I can see you folded up when you say that. <laughs> no, I just mean, just like think an accordion. Of, just think of me saved in everybody's phone as smush, smush puppet. puppet. Oh. I mean, you could do that if you just change your if you make a contact card on iPhone for yourself and name it that, and just start sending it to everybody. Be like, hey, here's my. I new, should to say here. Here's my new number, even though it's still your old number. They'll yeah. save it, and it'll be smush puppet in their fucking phone. I like yeah. that. Uh, what's something you guys haven't written that you wish you could? <laughs> something real erotic up. erotic stuff probably right well we can we I've wrote, some, we wrote something that we're we want to sell right now. <laughs> yeah is it erotic no oh but it's cool what, what's i don't called? think i could call one of you idiots and be writing an erotic novel with you who me one of you like hey, motherfucker i'm the best in the business dude yeah um, he's written the only two erotic i guess two I, romance romance for dudes. I guess i could yeah yeah um <laughs> what's uh what's the concept are you allowed to talk about it or are you guys actually shopping it we're shopping it are oh, you shopping right now? Yeah. Gina would kill us, wouldn't she? Yeah, we'll she? tell you offline. Yeah, Gina would kill us. Yeah, Gina's going to show up here. Hey, stop trying to get my guys to say stuff, you bitches. She just slaps Dan in the face, and Dan doesn't even move. He's just like, uh, dude, oh, I, no, no, no. Yeah, I don't know. I don't care what you did before you did this. You don't want Gina pissed at you. No. 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 I, yeah, I'm afraid you, of her. I'll, I'll, I get a question. She's like 5'2 and terrifying. That's my wife is 5'2 and terrifying. Yeah. Um, I get She's a, not that terrifying. Oh, yeah, she is. She's dude. actually lovely. Why were you breathing on her <laughs> neck earlier? <laughs> so she got weirded out because Jared was breathing on her neck, and I don't know if it was because he was breathing on her neck or the way he smelled or what. I mean, like, because you had just eaten a couple hot dogs. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You, 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 you had a two-dog night um, yeah. earlier. Uh, no, but I, it, one of the questions that would piss off Gina is this. <laughs> was there any thought, because you had a, a fan base, of just saying, all right, we're going to go independent and actually do this ourselves and keep all the money? Um. No. No, it's too much work. It's well, and she's like, it's a team. We're a team. And we and we wouldn't take it from her in any yeah. case. If we ever did something independent, like th that's a good model. There's a lot of guys now that if they get enough of a fan base, they do exactly that. Oh, yeah. They'll do oh, a spinoff yeah. and they'll have a presence in all of the spaces. Yeah. But if we were to ever do something like that, we would we'd keep Gina. I mean, you do. still need her around for a lot yeah. of shit. All I'll tell you is think about it. <laughs> Having there, there, are, there are programs for self-publishing where the agent can still be involved, and yeah, she, yeah. she'd take there her. Is, yeah. yeah, she'd take her cut, and I she'd help. Do it, but I'm telling you, <laughs> winky. I'm, I'm, winky uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to do a project with him. Here, here's the thing I love about. <laughs> Don't that. laugh at me. Not, I've got a good one. But as writers, it's I called think, Two Dog Night because everybody's like, "Oh man, you guys pumped these out in like four months." Here's my idea: so just go and write it. It's super easy, and I'll see you in a couple months. And you're like. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> yeah, my own shit. I come, I, come, I come with a very nice marketing package that, that makes sure it sells. You do. <laughs> you do. Um, but, but I'm sure you get that all the time, right? Hey, man, write my thing. It's super fucking easy. You guys are doing it, right? Yeah, we've had a few of those. Yeah, yeah, right? Like a million? <laughs> no, I don't know. Not a million, but yeah, we, you get that every Half time. my inbox. Hey, I have a great about. idea. Yeah, yeah. I have a great idea. Just you, write it. Here's dude, what you easy. should write. Yeah, <laughs> we we do have a lot of ideas already in the queue. Yeah, I know. That's and the that's, same uh, thing. That's, yeah. But that's with the great us thing. and movies. Yeah. Yeah. Every everybody that comes to me with a movie, it's like, dude, I have uh, thirty movie ideas right. already that, that we, right. we we have that I want to do. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, so we can't talk about it. Uh, is it in the military well, we can, space? I mean, it has AI in it. AI is a big component. Is it in the military space? Uh, one of our characters is former Army CID. Okay, so she's a main character. Oh, it's a woman. Yeah. Is this? Would that be the first time you've written a, a lead woman character before? We have a point of view female character in in this series. In yeah. this series, yeah. but she would be the the lead. What kind of reception have you gotten on that character? Just just out of uh, curiosity, because phenomenal. A, a lot of dudes have trouble writing from a female perspective. Yeah, some well, people Brian are really good at that. Obviously, I, right. I, would, I right. can't. 
which comes you know, naturally. He has yeah, a natural Navy. femininity. Submarine. Oh, you Submarine. guys are in the Navy. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, He's a submariner, so he can bring that feminine voice <laughs> yeah. that it's I soft can't touch. That I can't do. But yeah, she's actually very. Her name's Elizabeth Grimes. And in the first book, you, know, you read the first book. So mm-hmm. she's that character that is like everybody hates her. Like she's yeah. just kind of a bitch. And she's like, she thinks all the operators are morons. And she's there because. She's, she's what we call our, our devil's advocate. Yeah, she's the Reddit. devil's advocate. She's like constantly pissing everyone off. And she's the, the squeaky wheel. But she evolves throughout the series to become actually a, a big deal. And she you know, goes to sniper school and she provides Overwatch. And what we don't do is we don't make her an operator because. She, you know, come on. She's not going to be an operator. And she even says and that. And she, she says, says I, can't I can't do what I, you do. Yeah, she says, I can't go toe-to-toe with a six foot two, 200-pound dude. Like, that's yeah. not what I can do. There has to be something else I can do. And but I think because we wrote do. it that way, fans love her. Yeah. Like, girls and boys all love her. Like, we get fan mail about her all the time. That's cool. Um, it can be Which challenging, surprising. though. Like, there's not a whole lot of good – there's not a whole lot of male writers who can write female leads well. Like, Aaron Sorkin's obviously really good at it, or at least historically he's been good at it. I yeah. Don't, I don't know what he's doing now. I don't know a whole lot of men that have written, like, fe- lead female characters. Yeah, because I think really the, ten- the tendency is to try to write them how you want them to be. Yeah, <laughs> right. which right. are whores, Which right? is not right. right. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> she's like, yeah, I'll suck your dick. Fuck yeah. 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 Mean, real great why are you even <laughs> asking me this? Just, put it, just pull it out of here. Come on. Yeah. Uh, have you have you found in the age of you know since we're talking about streaming and all that stuff that your books have switched to more dialogue based versus exposition when you're writing? <laughs> yeah, because of the audio, audible. Mm, yeah, and, and it is we we read every sentence of this book out loud, and so what you find is that you can write something and it sounds really clear mm. in your head, but then as soon as you try to verbalize it, you realize all the tongue twisters. You yeah. realize mm-hmm. the words in the previous sentence that you've just repeat it or sound like or yeah, rhyme no, with the like, word. Okay. Yeah, so you have to you have to read it all out loud, make sure that there's this nice rhythm and that whoever is going to be saying these sentences isn't going to be tripping over their tongue mm. or sounds awkward. So yeah, we But do I that. think our books were pretty so we write them differently because of that both the narration and the dialogue, but I think we tend to write dialogue heavy books anyway yeah. because you know, if you're going to have four guys who are operators doing stuff, they got to grab ass and act like operators right mm. there's shit they say they give each other shit they, mm. if you don't write it in there it's just boring it's like i don't know well and the other so thing, there's a lot of dialogue anyway well, the other thing that we do is like and this this book opens with action and a lot of authors their action is a scene or two in a chapter mm. this is an op so you start from pre-op through the op through the exfil and then the sort of the debrief after so you're getting five chapters of action basically sure open this book and there's comms the whole time so that's dialogue mm. so it's really interesting because you have the internal monologue the operators questioning if, if this is going how they want and then you've got the guys in the talk and then you've got the just the radio comms between mm. the people in the field so um it's kind of fun to work all that dialogue into the actual action yeah a lot of work for ray i bet yeah a lot of work if you guys had to choose one book gun to head what's the best book ever written Oh, jeez. I mean, I could come up with ten, but to come up with one. one. And we get to take one on a desert island with a girl who's got no legs. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You're get, you're, you control her. What if it was the Necronomicon so you could make her legs grow back? Ah, but you can't. Or if you don't want her legs to grow back, that's fine, too. I'm not yeah, trying no, to. Yeah, no, she doesn't get her legs back. You I don't want to read to her all day. This is really I don't going away kink... from the question. Right. No, it's not. Yeah. It's not. You've got to read to the girl. I don't want to kink shame, and they want to have a girl with no legs, clearly, because they haven't said shit about it. Exactly. Uh, what, so what's your well, favorite book It has book to be one of our books. Pick, 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 no, you can't. Oh, you can't choose your yeah, own. You come on. Come me? on. I tell you, now I grew you up. I grew up as a, reading this genre, and but also reading a lot of like Stephen King, Dean mm-hmm. Kuhn, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. If I had to pick one book and it was the only book I was going to read, I'd probably be one of the King books. Uh, Hearts, Stephen King. Yeah, yeah. Hearts, Hearts in Atlantis, or uh, what's the other great one? Oh, uh, Bag of Bones. Man, that's an amazing book. Yeah. What about you? Oh, mine's easy. It's Jurassic Park. It's like the Bible for thriller authors. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. No shit. I don't. I've never read that book. Really? I did as a child. I'm surprised. I, by I, that don't, I don't. I don't. I don't. There's a reason why that book became one of the best movies of all time because he wrote so cinematically. Michael yeah. Crichton. Yeah. yeah. Michael Crichton. Yeah. 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 Uh, Crichton is responsible for a lot of shit. Yep. Yeah. He did ER. Yeah. For Christ's sake. I used six. to read that other series, uh, Inca Gold. Mm-mm. It wasn't. That wasn't the series, but it was uh, Dirt Diggler. <laughs> ah. Was that? Yeah. 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 He'll know. It. Look up being a gold. Um, You'll know what I'm talking about. What was your first book as a kid that you remember reading? 
Mine Pet was Encyclopedia Brown. Uh, yeah, you know, I read the I read Encyclopedia Brown. I read Hardy Boys. I never really liked them. I like Nancy Drew a little better. I'd roll dog. Really? Yeah. Have you seen the series? Uh, no, not yet. It's on uh, <laughs> it's on CW right now. Yeah, is yeah. it good? You know, CW. Clive <laughs> <laughs> Cussler. Clive C- Cussler. Cussler. Yeah, he's a good writer. Yeah. Yeah, that's who I was talking about. Yeah. Uh, f- Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl. Yeah. Roald Dahl. Oh yeah. James and the Giant Peach. No, the 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 time the time one. Was a toll booth? The time machine? No, it was called the toll booth. Look what's the, what's it about? Look up the toll booth. Uh, the, fa- the phantom toll booth. You get yeah. a computer. It's the time traveling one. Um, the reason I ask about a book as a child is usually it kind of influences you growing up of what what kind of writer you end up being or what you like to write. Um, I mine was Encyclopedia Brown as a kid, um, but that had nothing to do with later on. I remember like the first book that I like reading was like biographical stuff yeah. and history. And therefore, a lot of the stuff that I write to is, kill a is like that. Um, I, it was, I read it. I had to kill as well. Like I, can't, I can't remember the name of the first book I read, and it's been haunting me for fucking 15 years. And I've, been, I've, I've done like, I've gotten baked and spent hours on Google trying to find it at night. And I can't even remember. Like, the premise was uh, there was this, the main character was this girl, and she had two younger brothers who were psychic or some shit like that. And they were able to travel across dimension or something. I can't remember what it was, but it was my favorite book as a kid, and I lost it in my brain somewhere. Island of the Blue Dolphins. You remember that one? Yes, uh, Penny mm-hmm. Schuster and the Whittle Trunk Five. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Jimmy Tree Legs. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you didn't have to read that. No. That was mandated. No, no. Washington, Washington State. You know. Uh, well, well, yeah, mandated books for us were uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, obviously, mm-hmm. yeah. Lord of the Flies. Uh, Damn, Huckleberry Grapes Finn. Grapes of Wrath. Grape, of yeah, Grapes of Wrath. Huckleberry Finn before they pulled that. Because yeah. I heard that's pulled now. Did you read the Narnia books? No. I did, yeah. yeah I, I love those know. books. I mean, I'm, I'm not religious at all. All of R.L. Stein, though. The fucking great writer. Harry great. Potter, I burned through those. I, mean, I remember burning through those really But you quickly. weren't a kid. I was kind of, that was, was kind of a I weird time if you right. think about yeah. it. Like <laughs> When I was in third and fourth grade, yeah. kids were obsessed with the R.L. Stein Goosebumps. Oh yeah, there's still like, are. like but, I mean, like yeah, my day. kid, my every kids read day, yep. every it doesn't matter what your status was in school, if you were a cool kid or not. Like you brought every Goosebumps to fucking class yeah. and like showed your fucking collection off. Yeah, he's a really funny dude in real life. Yeah. R.L. Stein. He's a very he was odd in guy. it. He was in his, the last movie. Yeah, yeah, with, uh, Jack, with Black. Jack Black. He's in the <laughs> yeah. very end. It's really funny. It's really funny. Yeah, yeah, he was Mr. Black. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what's your style? Do you guys have a page count every single day? Is it uh, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5? What are your writing hours? You know, it depends on wh- what we're doing with the project, really. I mean, if we're in the rough draft, then it's, you know, Monday through Friday, at least a few hours a day. Um, try to. I don't really lock to a page count, but if you haven't done five pages, you feel like a loser, obviously. Yeah. Um, but remember, there's two of us, so for us, that's like... Two and a half a piece. Yeah. That's, <laughs> no, 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 five each. So you're looking at 50 pages a week, like you're writing a book and... Like no it's time. slower yeah. in the beginning for sure it is yeah. yeah and then you get some angular momentum and yeah three hours in the morning in the first week of a book is like two or three pages and how and do you like split it up time. like you are you writing because you, you're going to end up with like alternate timelines if you're writing so we have brains, multiple right? point of view characters yeah. so we split up by pov in the beginning and then we take yeah, i was just wargaming that in my head i could see like yeah. if he's taken some operation over here all he's got to do is get him to mm. that you know what i mean mm. But we switch. That's that's the weird thing. Yeah. So and and so we can write simultaneously for that reason, but also because we talk a couple times yeah. a day. So we'll we'll like outline. We don't really outline like mature people, but like sure. we'll have we we'll have like little notes that say you know chapter two Brian Dempsey POV and like one sentence that would mean nothing to anyone else on the planet to remind him what we talked about. Yeah. And then same for me. So it's like on a note card five chapters of what we're gonna do. And I do three, and he does two, or vice versa, and we write them at the same time. And when we're done with two or three chapters each, we swap them, and we rewrite each other's stuff. Okay. And then it goes into a master file. How, and so how, that how way many get times have you said, I fucking hate you, this is the dumbest shit you've ever written? I mean, uh, I, I don't think it I sounds have. stupid, but don't, we don't know that it happens. We've, no way. It sounds insane, yeah. but we have, like, zero conflict. First of all, there's zero well, ego. Well, we should explain our end game model to them. Yeah, it's go and talk into the mic. Model. Model. Explain it to me. You don't, you don't remember it? It's so whatever. We've grown all these books together. You don't even remember. Um, yeah. So our <laughs> model is that like we look at each book. It's it's almost like a kid. Like you went with your wife. You want to have four kids and be like, well, these two are yours and these two are mine. You know, we we look at it at, at the end of the day. Like that thing is what we want to be proud of, and we don't really care who wrote what. We just want that book 
to be like badass and people to like it. And so that's what we celebrate. And so we take that approach. We've taken that from the very beginning. We want to sell as many of those as we can. And we just want the end product to be what we're proud of. And it changes your whole mindset um, to this team approach. You know, we're just excited to get whatever other ideas the other guy has on the page. And it's not just art, but business. Like there's both the yeah. craft and the business side of it. Sure. You know, he, if he says, dude, if you change this one part, we'll sell four more books. Let's like, so, okay, let's eight bucks. Yeah, do it. $4 for me. Let's do it. Yeah. Like, I mean, cause it is a business, you know, this isn't, we're not changing the world with these books. It's pulp fiction. It's <laughs> entertainment. If Brian feels strongly that someone's going to enjoy this chapter more, if I don't have that dude say that, oh, fine, he won't say it. I don't care. It's uh, extremely rare. You know, yes, that, right? it yeah, is. That's no, hard we, know, to find. we do know that. And in fact, we sit on panels at these writers' conferences with other co author teams. You know, oh, they'll yeah. have a co author panel, and everyone's sitting there, and they'll say, Oh, did you, so how do you guys do it? And we do it, and you look, and everyone's looking at you like you got, you know, yeah. something growing out of your head. Like, you're like, how you could I say can't, it. That can't possibly work, right? Yeah, <laughs> forgot, I forgot where I was. Dick, <laughs> grown, <laughs> bros. Dick grown out of Dick your head. Dick grown out of your head. Yeah. Wrong. So I was thinking about that other show we did. Yeah. No, this is the only um, show that exists. The church lady show. Though. But yeah, nobody yeah. else, nobody else <laughs> does it that way that we've met so far. They're like, Pride yeah. of authorship is very strong. People want to get their own bits into there. Yeah. You, you, I mean, yeah. it's not just in writing though. You see it everywhere, like in public policy and all this other bullshit. Anything. Oh, anything, for sure. anything that has any creative element to it that your name's going to be on, people are like, well, I want my idea to be in there. Just shut the fuck up and let the best idea be in there. Well, this yeah. it, it makes us sound like we're selfless, and that's and that's not entirely <laughs> true. We also recognized early on, like there are certain things I'm better at, there's yeah. certain things he's better at, and we're both mature enough and dedicated enough to making money with the books that we're like, look, dude, you do that part a little better. If you say that's what it is, mm -hmm. I, I disagree, but shit, that's your thing, so go. And, and our things tend to complement each other. There's certain areas I do better, certain areas he do be does better. So knowing that and identifying it very early on in the first few months, that makes it seamless. And so it's not totally just selfless. It's just, you know, self-awareness. Well, I think the other part is, though, you know, if you're used to military background, you're used to working on a team. Mm, like, right. You, know, you, you do this, I do that. Yeah. You do this, I do that. Yeah. I, see, I take the same approach, but a lot of people don't. I, going back to your point about, like, I want to – a lot of people just want to say that they did that one thing. Yeah, but, I know. But unless you're going to a movie or you're sitting reading <laughs> with someone aloud and saying, oh, did you like that sentence you just laughed at? That was <laughs> mine. Right. Yeah. Nobody's going to fucking know. Yeah, nobody yeah. cares. Nobody cares. And nobody nobody cares. cares. Um, but telling people that, they don't understand for some reason. It's like it's climbing like, Mount Everest. Yeah. yeah. Nobody cares. And nobody cares. Um, well, it's like your show. So, like, you guys have a dynamic that's awesome because three of you guys make the dynamic. Mm -hmm. Right. But, but it, it's, it's one of those things where there's, there's no better person for whatever it is. Right. Well, I mean, it's, it's... Yeah, but I think he also just said individually you suck. That's not okay. Yeah. It's, <laughs> you're, yeah, yeah but, you're a guest here, Brian. That's not... <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, pro Dude, probably... Leave it to Jeff to turn something that I tried to say as a positive into a negative. Yeah, well, we always Thanks. do that. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks. We always do that with Anne Frank. So. I'm just saying, <laughs> nothing's more annoying than someone who's climbed Mount Everest. Oh, God. They just work that into every, every situation. It's every like a situation. vegan or like a it's staunch like, atheist. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're out. The what waiter are, comes why over. Why is this guy praying over like, here? Because yeah, he's yeah. religious. Oh, dude. you know where I shit. didn't get food waited on me at was when I climbed Mount Everest. Yeah, we know, <laughs> Jeff. For fuck's sake, we already, we all fucking know. Can you imagine? We haven't heard the fucking end of it. Can you imagine a vegan like, atheist who climbed Mount Everest? Oh, it would be, oh, it would, God, it's dude. over. But it's like, but you think about that. It's like, oh my God, I almost died and I went through years of training and then you you come back and you're in the u.s like uh, i climbed mount everest so like cool yeah. <laughs> like wow <laughs> all that that's what you get wow that sounds neat congratulations yeah, yeah. yeah. there's no there's no follow-on no, nobody even, want, nobody even wants to know Ooh, how was it they just go all right because you have Jeff, no, we're over it. Yeah, yeah. Jeff, we've you heard about it. You fucking climb Mount Everest. Just <laughs> shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> Maybe if there was a pot of gold up there or something, eh. or even just a leprechaun, right. and you could see it and take a selfie with it, that would be better. Because if, if you show me the selfie, yeah, if you show me the selfie, if you show me the selfie with you and the leprechaun at the top of Mount Everest, I will care. Otherwise, eh. I'm even not going to care. Just for a minute, right? Yeah, it's just foolish. Why? Yeah. <laughs> I skydive onto Mount Everest. Well, when, fuck it. Whenever I see those like, people, and I'll, I'll take it a step further. Yeah. Uh -oh. I see people who have died go. up there. And they're like, oh, man, they died hiking Mount Everest. Why, Dumb. motherfucker? You, Dumb. Shouldn't have, you shouldn't have hiked it. Ro no. You Rogan, shouldn't have hiked it. Rogan does a great bit on that. He's like, people, sometimes you just do stuff that's hard just to do it. Like, there's no, yeah. there's no point. Like, we've been up there. There's nothing there. That's why no. we all live down here. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's nothing up there. No, I watched a 60-minute special where this guy had half of his nose 
frozen off. off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fingers missing, his whole thing. And he was with his uh, 16 or 17 year old son. And I have kids, I have two boys. Um, and the, they were like, oh, you know, why do you do this? And he's like, I love it. You know, I needed to feel alive. And then they cut to the son. They were like, how do you feel about your dad doing this? And he was like, well, you know, he loves it. And uh, <laughs> it's great. And I'm like, yeah. that's your son. And you're going to just go up and burn your nose off and, you know, distort your fingers and Dumb. face. And to, it, to do what? To do what? Yeah, Come back could. and tell a waitress that you climb Mount Everest and she's 22. And yeah. she goes, she has fucking three kids already. She's already <laughs> pissed off. Her fucking water bill isn't paid. She's going to go, cool. That's yeah. Good. Wow. Yeah. You know Great. Could, Do you want a fucking salad? Yeah. You know what he could have done instead is live <laughs> hard. Really detailed. He could have. If he, there's a lot of detail in that. Yeah. <laughs> if he didn't mind his nose being fucked up, he could have lived Artie Lang's life and oh, had yeah. a much better time. Exactly. <laughs> Why couldn't you smell the ranch? Because oh, it's expensive. It's I not my, cheap. My nose burned off. I'm wasting a lot of fucking money. <laughs> yeah. Dumb. For that yeah. one fucking shot at the fucking Waffle House waitress. Oh boy. <laughs> it's gonna be. It like, was a plan, is what, what you're saying. What? Yep. From the beginning. You're okay. moving all in. Do you yeah. think moving there's got to be one spaces. guy out there who fucking climbed Everest with the expectation that he would get laid because of it, right? I'm sure they, least all, one they all have yeah. that expectation. Yes. But that's what I mean. The reality is, like, you're dancing in a club. I climbed Mount <laughs> Everest. Yeah. Sweet. Like, like how, <laughs> You have to find a way to work that organically into conversations. Or become famous because I mean, I of it. Imagine so people it's were, also like, recognize the fame. I imagine all the people that have climbed Mount Everest are very pompous about around other climbers, and they have to. They probably have some sort of badge or something mm -hmm. that they wear when they're around other climbers, so the mm -hmm. other climbers know. Oh, how long did it take? Yeah, oh, yeah, really? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> I had AIDS. I, I, I did Everest in eight days. Yeah, yeah like, they get it sewn into their. Skin. Yeah, they, yeah, they really work it in, you know, and then they're they they talk down upon other climbers that haven't done Everest. By the I'm way, sure that's a real quick. Have you guys climbed Everest? No. Okay, good, good. If, if we, so. Right. <laughs> Shit. But, I, but I did. Yeah. Which I, did I work, wouldn't say it now. Yeah, right? right? <laughs> I did work as a Sherpa, so I was helping those other people climb. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. You know, so hard, I helped a lot you, of idiots climb. Could you imagine? <laughs> I knew that one tidbit that they like both did. That's Everest what I was going to say. <laughs> well, we should bring a guest on sometimes. That, that has climbed that's, every just done, start Not even that, just done anything. And we attack that one thing the whole time. And they say, so tell us about yourself. What have you done? Yeah, hey, so what are you known for? <laughs> oh shit! And then we have to decide if we're going to bring it up or not, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Do we lie and say we didn't climb? But I was, I was, I was in uh, Puerto Rico, and I, I was having this exact conversation while drunk with a bunch of people, and I was like, "Watch!" The waitress comes over. I'm like, "Hey, I climb Mount Everest," and she goes, "Uh, see." <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Jared, she didn't speak English. Yeah, Whatever, exactly. I still got the outcome I want. Is what happened there. You so. got the way with Francheros? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Did she blow you? No. Oh, well, it fuck. was not a fucking restaurant. Well, it's in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, dude. It's Aquadilla. Let's go, Puerto Rico. No, that's not the there. slogan. Yes, dude. That is not the slogan. The slogan I mean, that's country. a slogan if you want to be a politician you in can Puerto get Rico. Blown at brunch. It says it on every single door they have no, of restaurant. Not at yes. all. I would Let's go Puerto place. Rico. You can get blown at brunch. No. I got to no. go Chili Killies if I'm going brunch, though, honestly. Chili Killies? Never heard Chili of it. Chili Killies. I like, like women to lick my Achilles tendon. Oh, God damn it. What? That's just graphic. Oh. Uh, best brunch spot in New York since you guys spent so much time there. <coughs> I don't know. Come on. They don't do brunch. New York. They're writing. Huh? Endless mimosas, brother. Nothing? You guys are writers. You have to drink a lot, right? <laughs> like, that's a Mets man. Oh, we, we sleep in. Yeah, it's a what time? Yeah. Late as we can. Really? Yeah. You got kids? Yeah. And and they're cool with it? Just no, like, no. Yeah. I got to get up for them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're mowing the lawn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, my kids mow the lawn five days a week. Your kids And then you children. yell at them for waking you with a lawnmower? Yeah. yeah. I do. What yeah. cities do you live in? Tampa, and he's in Kansas. Ooh. Where in Kansas? Kansas City. Mm. Those are two cities cold. that are not real big tourist spots. Um, no, we like it that way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No mm. shit. You riders hate the Tories. Yeah. yeah I've heard that. You guys sports fans? You know, it's getting harder to be a sports fan, you know. Because you live in Tampa? Yeah. Yeah. Their so. teams are just terrible, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, every year it's the same. It's like, this is the year. We got this guy and this guy in the first game. You're like, look at that. Kansas yeah. City, though. I mean, yeah, we've had Kansas a pretty good City's run. I have, I have the Royals opinions. and the series and Mahomes. Mahomes, dude. Yeah. I have love, he's on tonight. Yeah. Love watching Mahomes. I have my opinions. Go ahead, fire away. I think that if your sports teams, you have to be from that state to play on that team. Oh, from the states to play on that team? Yep. That's oh, dumb. But no, it's not. <laughs> nah, because it doesn't make sense. Down. Why do you have state pride in a team? Like, the fucking avalanches, for mm -hmm. one, it's 90% Swedish and Canadian. You don't even have an American That's on the, the goddamn team. That's the entire league, dude. Weather. 
Like weather, 80, but it's like Montana everybody in Colorado is yeah. like the Avalanches are my team. Yeah, you should have to be from. The I state. think eighty three or eighty four percent of the NHL that is makes, either Canadian, Russian, or Swedish. Yes, so you're. I'm, I'm that just saying make any that sense. there would be no American hockey teams if that were the case. Okay, well then we get rid of hockey. But football, <laughs> football. You really understand you business, got, Jared. You gotta be no. from the state. No, nope. then we could have then we could have true shit talking. No, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense if if I'm picking. From everywhere in the country to assemble a team, mm -hmm. no. It's not really your team. Now, see, Jared is just dumb. <laughs> um, <laughs> he will not be reading any of your books. Uh, but this is the point in the show where we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is somebody that has inspired you or helped you to be where you are today. That could be another author. could be your agents. could be your family. could be anybody. Uh, who is the most influential person in submarine. your lives? Do we have to n name the person? Well, unless you guys both fuck the same girl in Tucson. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a place in Tucson <coughs> called the uh, Talking Stick Resort, and they have the worst food of any casino I've ever been to. I'm that's not a going non sequitur, there. but you brought up Tucson. I mean, I'll you go. Bet. You bet. Wait, that's not Tucson. Uh, we'll start with you, Jeffrey. Um, <laughs> and I, by the way, I know you like to be called Jeff. Jeffrey just feels. I, like I know. I'm, we're, we're just gonna roll on. So. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of people that have influenced me, but the person the most is my dad, actually. My dad's, first of all, my dad is 81. Mm -hmm. He just recently called me and bitching and moaning because he popped his Achilles tendon, or I mean his uh, patellar tendon, his mm. knee tendon, so while pushing an airplane out of a hangar by himself. And he was really mad that everyone else didn't show up to help him. So that's my 81-year-old dad, still skis single Shit. diamond blacks. He just... Just sucks the marrow out of life, man. He just like he's an amazing guy. He's getting Very his money's worth. Yeah. He's getting it. That's what he says. Yeah, and he's well, he's all about that too. He's, he's going to get his every penny out of it for sure. Hell yeah! But he's the abs absolutely my inspiration. If I'm 81 and I'm still skiing black diamonds and bitching and moaning because no one helped me push an airplane out of a hangar, we're sitting happy. Yeah, exactly. What about you? Oh, my wife. I mean, she makes me better. Oh, great. Now I'm in trouble. Now yeah, I'm in yeah, trouble. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, had to, so I, had, to see cool. I had to see what he would say. You really oh, exactly. You left really, open. You and really Wendy. Really. And I love Wendy. I took, saw it more than nope. any. I, I, I edited I took, out the Wendy part. I took the yeah. shot. Going with his dad. Yeah. That was, uh, we're supposed to be a team. That was You so really cool. fucked him over on that yeah, one. He, he no, got dude. to shoot first, and he picked his target. <laughs> well, shoot shoot. You're shoot, like yeah. that asshole on The Price is Right that goes 701. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's me. That could be my new nickname. 701. Yeah, but you know what? I, I mean, I commend you because I know for at least the next 18 months, his wife is, is going to be like, why wow, you didn't make me your drink of the week. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure they're both huge fans of the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They'll that, probably be listening tomorrow. That's a good point. Tomorrow. They may never know. Yeah, right. Ever. Right. Our demo is, you know, ninety four percent male. Yeah, yeah, skewed towards that. Yeah. Um. So your wife? Well, I just say she makes me better. I mean. Before I met her, I thought I was the best at everything, and now I know I'm not. And, I need to uh, meet yeah. someone like that. <laughs> oh, Jared, you never, you've never—you've been well, married three I times. Well, because I do. I do think I'm the best at everything. Yeah, but yeah. you've been married three times. You're all done with Fine. that. Well, yeah. all, one of them was like, it was like a fucking, I don't know, an ancient marriage where they just decide they're married. There was no actual paperwork you involved. You guys sang a song, though. There was music. Yeah, we did sing There was a song. song. Yeah. A porn star. Okay. So. Was it arranged marriage? No. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yes. Yeah. It should have. It should have been arranged. Yeah. Right. yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why does she make you better, though, exactly? Well, I think, uh, you know, if you stay married for a long time, I've been married over 20 years, um, I think you have to at some point become an introspective person and say, okay, you know, what what is it about me that's not perfect? Mm -hmm. And if you can accept that you're not perfect, then you can start to actually improve. And so the first time I started to, you know, she's the first person that really – broke through this sort of delusion maybe that I had that I did everything right, which right. I think is a, maybe a male-oriented trait. I think you do everything right. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think she helped me see that I didn't do everything perfect the first time and or the right right the first time, and mm -hmm. um, that just makes you better, right? So, Have you what, guys What's her first name? Karen. When Karen, was, uh, I'm apologize, Jared. Karen, if you're out there, um, just know that you were a better person than Wendy, and that's what Jeffrey <laughs> wanted to say. So. <laughs> Um, again, kill Jeffrey's mic so he can't respond to that. But uh, I was, I mean, what was the last time you guys both uh, assembled IKEA furniture together? Never. Well, That's they, they the real test. Yeah. Yeah. The real test of a no, not no, you two, not you and your wife. Oh, oh. Um, um, we were just putting a bed together last weekend. Even going to IKEA, see that is a he test survived an IKEA yeah. trip. Yeah. yeah, I can't with yeah. construction. I barely. Do. That means there he was chose some one. yelling. 
you know. <laughs> so I started to move one piece, and she didn't think I should. Yeah. I feel like all Ikea shit, and I would pay more for this, should come like double parts. That way, if I start to feel rage, I can break something and not have to worry <laughs> Actually, about that having would be, broken. Yeah. If you could, like, you I would could, pay twenty would you to forty like percent more for, for that. the for the double parts. This is the rage package. Yeah. Oh yeah! <laughs> 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 Fuck you. Exactly. Instead, you're trying to bend one of those L. Oh god no. damn it, dude! Well, if you're willing to pay forty percent more, you can just get shit that's already built. I don't know if you're aware. <laughs> There's whole stores of it. Like, yeah, yeah, but you full. know, you know what? what? I, already I, put I have together. a rebuttal to that. Time, yeah, I, I have a rebuttal to that because. <laughs> Nowadays, even like the ancient furniture stores, going in and trying to get furniture, you're on the floor and the salesman's being a fucking chode. You're like, okay, I walk in there, I'm like, I want that. All right, I'll uh, order it from our warehouse and be here in five weeks. Yeah. yeah. No, motherfucker, I want that. It's why I walked into this fucking store. Yeah. Yeah. And it also weighs a thousand pounds. Here's what I want I, I'm just going to start ordering IKEA shit off Amazon and get the package where they put it together for you. Get that person to order my house, let them put it together, and I'm going to yell at them the whole goddamn time. Yeah. <laughs> just so I don't have to actually start a relationship, I'm just going to have one with this guy for that one evening. Right? <laughs> We're in a fucking huge fight the whole time. I'm like, all right, brother. Nice to meet you. Well, the same with I Best Buy nowadays. System. It's like you go to Best Buy. Oh, we could we could get that off the website. So can I. So can I, motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. God damn it. I, know. I hate it. You wonder why Amazon is kicking the shit out of all of you. This is why. Do you want our expert you installation suck. for your for the toaster? Yeah, yeah. Come over and plug it in, bitch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks for your help. Exactly. Uh, where can everybody find your books at? Everywhere they get books. Amazon is where probably 90% of our sales. Yeah, but it, it's in stores. And, and Audible. They're all on Audible. Yeah, They're Audible, all on Audible. Audible and Amazon is yep. easiest. How many total? Uh, five in this series. We've got three new ones in the new series coming up. Book six coming out next year. And then we've got two in another series, the Nick Foley series. Shit. So. Yes. Not Nick Foles, though. No. No. Big Dick Nick. No. Uh, those royalties are running nice, dude. You backlist. Get, get that's what I work. said. It's you backlist. Get 10 in the work. <laughs> Boom. That's nice. It's all about backlist. Nice. Tarantino, yeah. The Tarantino number. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You don't have to tell me about that. Come on. Come on. Um, man, it was, it was awesome to have you guys on. Uh, sometimes it's a happy accident where it's just like, hey, man, come down and have, have a show with us. You know, like having a catch with uh, Costa. Oh, yeah. We got to give the you thing. these. Eli Crane. You guys know Eli, right? Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah. So we got these bottle breachers for you guys. Oh, oh, so tier one bottle breachers. There we go. Boom. We'll have to go live and give one of these away. Better known business. It's almost like a. Uh, he was on uh, uh, Shark Tank, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yes. Yeah. yeah, he was doing he was doing pretty good, and then Shark Tank, and it took off, and now exploded. You know, and that's what a great story too, right? Eli, he's the guy that he gets out of the teams, mm -hmm. and they're like, "So what are you gonna do, bro?" He's like, "I'm gonna make bottle cap openers." And like, you know, it's almost trite. It's almost like a yeah. joke you tell. I'm working a bottle cap factory. Right? Yeah, the dude works in a bottle cap factory, but he was yeah, on like Shark Tank, and, and he's and making shit. tons of money. And he's he's a really cool guy i know you guys have talked to him before he's, oh, of course he's yeah. just a really really cool guy so just we, for, and look at the product i mean oh my god yeah, the looks there's some way it looks to fantastic it. just for yeah. the audience if you're gonna uh make sure you tie a string around one end if you're gonna be inserting this into yourself <laughs> yes because you don't want to lose it in there that's gonna be a very embarrassing yeah, not if trip you're pulling it out with that little lip yeah right exactly. I, that's gonna catch oh yeah <laughs> especially <laughs> if you get it all the way around the bend you yeah. just get, you gotta spread <laughs> you gotta spread the problem is there's a sphincter down there, and it kind of sucks stuff up yeah. into it. That's yeah, what makes no. butt fucking so I'm gonna great. Get out, I'm going to well, get out the, I'm gonna get out the flash for the butt stuff. Yeah. Oh, let's do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're probably going to get on the phone with your publicist after this and be like, man, where the <laughs> fuck did you guys send me <laughs> for this? Fishing dude? boat captain. <laughs> oh, that's Captain Stabbin. Yeah. There we go. Captain Stabbin. Captain Stabbin. Remember that? No. Yeah. Yeah, it was a fucking porn series back yeah, then. Yeah, that was a porn right. series. Come on, it was a, it was a website. That's right. It was a dot com. We're going to get them out of here so they still have a career. Um, <laughs> oh, you don't want to do more flashcards? <laughs> no, not at all. Probably not the right audience for them personally because they are successful people. Uh, Brian Andrews, Jeffrey Wilson, thank you for being on the show. I appreciate it. Anytime, man. Thanks, uh, guys. For Jared Taylor, D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.